The assembly will come to order. The chief clerk will call the roll. Assemblywoman Anderson. Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Assemblywoman Bilbra Axelrod. Assemblywoman Black. Assemblywoman Brown May. Assemblywoman Carlton. Assemblywoman Cohen. Assemblywoman Considine. Assemblywoman Dickman. Assemblywoman Duran. Assemblyman Ellison. Assemblyman Flores. Assemblywoman Gonzalez. Assemblywoman Gordo. Assemblyman Hapen. Assemblywoman Hansen. Assemblywoman Hardy. Assemblywoman Hadegui. Assemblywoman Kasama. Assemblywoman Krasner. Assemblyman Levitt. Assemblywoman Martinez. Assemblywoman Marzola. Assemblyman Matthews. Assemblyman MacArthur. Assemblywoman Brittany Miller. Assemblyman C.H. Miller. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. Assemblywoman Wynn. Assemblyman O'Neill. Assemblyman Orlicker. Assemblywoman Peters. Assemblyman Roberts. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong. Assemblywoman Thomas. Assemblywoman Titus. Assemblywoman Tolles. Assemblywoman Torres. Assemblyman Watts. Assemblyman Wheeler. Assemblyman Yeager. Speaker Frierson. Here, Assemblywoman Benita Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May the record reflect that 42 members are present. The record shall so reflect there are 42 members present. There is a quorum. The assembly will please rise for the prayer by Reverend Thomas Howe of Our Lady of La Vang in Las Vegas. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to pray for you all. And we come together in honoring of Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, you have created us as man and woman in your image and likeness and bestow on us each with gifts and talents to enrich each other's life. We ask that you give us graces and strength to fulfill our duties with care and bring us to a common ground where we experience the genuine love and unity in diversity. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Order of business two, reading and approval of the journal. Carson City, Thursday. Mr. Speaker. Assemblywoman Benita Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to dispense with further reading of the journal and authorize the Speaker and Chief Clerk to make necessary corrections or additions. You've heard the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Go to order business four, reports of standing committees. Mr. Speaker, your committee on commerce and labor to which was referred Senate Bill 35 has had the same under consideration and begs you to put the same back the recommendation to pass and to have a future. Mr. Speaker, your committee on revenue to which were referred Senate Bills 2574 has had the same under consideration and begs you to put the same back the recommendation to pass. Lessa E. Cohen, Chair. We go to order business seven, messages from the Senate. Senate Chamber, Carson City, April 29, 2021. To the Honorable the Assembly, I have the honor to inform the Honorable Body that the Senate on this day passed Assembly Bill 1, Chair Rodriguez, Assistant Secretary of the Senate. Thank you. We do have a few minutes, but so we're not pressing it. We will uh, begin by starting with the joint session, and uh, the Chief Clerk of the Assembly will, again, for joint session, call us the Assembly roll. Assemblywoman Anderson. Here. Assemblywoman Benitez Thompson. Here. Assemblywoman Bilbra Axelrod. Here. Assemblywoman Black. Here. Assemblywoman Brown May. Here. Assemblywoman Carlton. Here. Assemblywoman Cohen. Here. Assemblywoman Considine. Here. Assemblywoman Dickman. Here. Assemblywoman Duran. Here. Assemblyman Ellison. Here. Assemblyman Flores. Here. Assemblywoman Gonzalez. Here. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Here. Assemblyman Hafen. Assemblywoman Hansen. Assemblywoman Hardy. Here. Assemblywoman Hardy. Here. Assemblywoman Kasama. Here. Assemblywoman Krasner. Here. Assemblywoman Levitt. Here. Assemblywoman Martinez. Here. Assemblywoman Marzola. Here. Assemblyman Matthews. Here. Assemblyman MacArthur. Here. Assemblywoman Brittany Miller. Here. Assemblyman C.H. Miller. Here. 
Here. Assemblywoman Monroe Marano? Here. Assemblywoman Wynn? Here. Assemblyman O'Neill? Here. Assemblyman Orlicker? Here. Assemblywoman Peters? Here. Assemblyman Roberts? Here. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong? Here. Assemblywoman Thomas? Here. Assemblywoman Titus? Here. Assemblywoman Tolls? Here. Assemblywoman Torres? Assemblywoman Torres? Here. Assemblyman Watts? Here. Assemblyman Wheeler? Here. Assemblyman Yeager? Here. Speaker Frierson. Here. I think that we are a few minutes ahead, so in order for us to be on time, we are scheduled to, to hear from uh, Assemblywoman Dina Titus at 11.15. So in short order, we will be hearing from uh, Congresswoman Dina, Dina Titus. We'll be at ease just for a few minutes so that we can be on the same timeline as the Senate for playing of the message. So if everybody can just stay put for just a little bit.
Thank you, Speaker Frierson and Leader Canizaro for allowing me to speak with you all today. I'm just sorry I couldn't be with you in person because the Nevada legislature is such a special place to me, having served there for 20 years. And I always enjoy coming to Carson during the session, meeting with our executive members across the lawn who are doing such a great job for Nevada, hanging out with old friends like Marlene and Roger, Helen, Don and Randy, dinner at the JT, dancing at the Timbers, and that wonderful morning after party we have at Adele. So much has changed. I want to thank every one of you for continuing, though, to do the people's business in the face of this pandemic. Serving in the Nevada legislature has always involved sacrifices, time away from family and jobs, but never before has it carried the personal risk of meeting together while our state is fighting a virus that has taken the lives of more than 5,400 of our fellow Nevadans. We mourn for those we have lost, the people in our own lives and the loved ones of our friends and neighbors. But our job as public servants, yours here in Carson City and mine in Washington, is to give our fellow Nevadans hope. Hope that they can keep a roof over their heads. Hope that their children can learn in a safe and healthy environment. Hope that they can get back to work without fear of illness. And that's exactly what you all have done. And we're seeing positive signs as a result. As more people are being vaccinated, the spread of COVID-19 is slowing within our population. Nevada has now administered more than 2 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. The percentage of Nevadans testing positive for COVID has fallen from more than 20% in December to below 6%. And I'm optimistic that we'll beat this deadly virus. But please remind your family, friends, and constituents that the COVID-19 vaccines are safe, effective, free, and available to everyone, regardless of legal status. Getting vaccinated is the patriotic thing to do. It's the key to returning to normal, to saving lives, and to bringing about economic recovery. Fortunately, scheduling an appointment for a COVID-19 vaccine in Nevada has never been easier. With this incredible tool in our pocket, I know that Nevada's best days are ahead. Under the great leadership of Governor Steve, you have laid the groundwork for a strong recovery. Meanwhile, I've been working hard in Washington to pass measures that will help put shots in arms, money in pockets, workers in jobs, and our students safely back in schools. The linchpin is the American Rescue Plan a comprehensive relief package that we passed to crush this virus and get our economy back on track. Especially in Southern Nevada, our tourism-based economy has been devastated by the pandemic, with visitation last year down more than half across the state. Even as we turn the corner in this battle against the virus, we sadly still rank among the top states in our percentage of unemployed workers. That's why I push so hard to ensure that in the American Rescue Plan, the hardest hit states receive the highest share of aid. As a result, the state of Nevada, our counties and cities will receive over $4 billion in flexible funding to help address budget gaps, accelerate vaccine distribution, keep frontline workers on the payroll and provide rent and food assistance to our most vulnerable. Meanwhile, our neighbors in Utah, a state with a slightly higher population than us, but with a lower unemployment rate, will receive around $2.5 billion. So I mean it when I say the American Rescue Plan was designed to help those who need it the most. As you're all aware, the impact of this pandemic on Nevada students has drawn national attention. To get our students, teachers, and school personnel safely back into the classroom, the American Rescue Plan is providing over $964 million for Nevada schools. This funding can be used to address learning loss, improve ventilation, provide PPE, and hire critical staff, including nurses and counselors. The American Rescue Plan will also dramatically expand access to quality and affordable health care, cut the child poverty rate in half by increasing the child tax credit, and provide unemployment assistance to Nevadas in need through no fault of their own. 
And of course, we cannot forget the direct payments in the bill that will go to 87% of all adults in Nevada and 86% of children. These dollars will help people in our state put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads while helping businesses across our state that may have otherwise had to close their doors. In Southern Nevada, we have some of the best restaurants in the world. The American Rescue Plan provides $28.6 billion for direct relief to struggling independent restaurants. The bill also adds funding to save our stages so that live performance spaces will have access to $16 billion in relief. We need these resources to get our economy quickly moving in the right direction again, but we also need longer term opportunities to make Nevada more resilient during economic downturns. We've got to make it easier for Nevadans to find jobs. That's why I advocated in my position as the chair of the Economic Development Subcommittee to provide $3 billion in grants to be administered by the EDA to boost local economies across the country. I was proud to put my mark on the American Rescue Plan by ensuring that $750 million of these grants will go specifically to states like Nevada that have experienced a significant loss of travel and tourism related jobs. This is the first time in our nation's history that the EDA will have a mandate to provide grants to communities like ours. So there is a lot of good news for Nevadans in the American Rescue Plan. It's critical that our state and local communities now take advantage of the opportunities that are available with this new relief. I'm confident that under the leadership of Maggie Carlton, your money committees will do just that but please don't hesitate to contact my office to discuss how we can work together to bring additional resources to Nevada. I know what a difference you all are making. For example, you unanimously passed AB 106, which will allocate an additional $50 million in federal aid to small businesses and nonprofits impacted by the pandemic. And you're considering legislation to address learning loss in schools because of the pandemic. I'm proud to support the back on track bill to provide options for at risk students to attend in person or virtual summer school in an effort to close the widening achievement gap. Senator Dondero Loop and Assemblywomen Anderson and Torres know from experience what our schools and students need. We know it's not good enough though to return to life as it was before the pandemic. We need to build back better. And that's why you are hearing President Biden announce bold new plans to invest in our nation's future, especially when it comes to infrastructure. As a senior member of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, I'll continue to ensure that Nevada has a seat at the table in this discussion. I'm focusing on improving our transportation infrastructure with construction of I-11, the interstate to Phoenix, addressing congestion on Interstate 15, and supporting projects like Brightline West that will bring high-speed rail service between Southern Nevada and Southern California. These projects are key to diversifying our state's economy and keeping our unemployment rate low, even at times when the tourism industry is facing trouble. And though President Biden's American Jobs Plan will put millions to work in good paying union jobs, union jobs, to update and improve our infrastructure and ensure that every American has access to clean water and high speed internet. In the 21st century, we shouldn't settle for anything less. Last week, the president announced the Companion American Families Plan a new proposal to make it easier to get into the middle class and stay in the middle class. In the United States of America, preschool, quality childcare, and paid leave should not be luxuries reserved only for the lucky few. Best of all, we can fully pay for the American Jobs Act and the American Families Act without raising taxes on anyone who makes less than $400,000 per year. In fact, President Biden's plans to make large corporations and the wealthiest among us pay their fair share would actually decrease the deficit. These proposals won't be easy to get across the finish line, but it'll be worth it. I'm willing to work with anyone on either side of the aisle who's serious about investing in America's future. Of course, we have our work cut out for us in other areas as well. 
climate change remains an existential threat. I'm grateful for the leadership in this area of Senator Chris Brooks and Assemblyman Howard Watts, and I thank you all for continuing to make it a priority. We must redouble our efforts to reduce fossil fuel consumption and protect our public lands for future generations. Let's hear it for Assemblywoman Gonzalez's 30 by 30 resolution. Earlier this year, I introduced bicameral legislation with Senator Cortez Masto to ensure a consent-based siting process for nuclear waste disposal. Now that we have the White House on our side when it comes to rejecting Yucca Mountain, Nevada should be part of the solution in the federal discussion to find a new storage site. When it comes to gun violence, people in Las Vegas know the consequences of inaction all too well. At the federal level, we should follow Nevada's example and emulate the courage of Assemblywoman Hardigy, passing extended background checks and extreme risk laws are the best way we can do that. These policies we know will save lives. I'm pleased that the Assembly's passed legislation to expand background checks for private arms sales and transfers by banning ghost guns. President Biden has taken executive action to tighten restrictions on these self-assembled, untraceable firearms. I believe it's time for Congress to act as well. So let's find some common ground because surely we can all agree that parents shouldn't have to worry that their kids won't come home when they drop them off at school or at a concert. This session, you again pass Senate Joint Resolution 8 which would amend the state constitution to guarantee equal rights for all. This reinforces the Equality Act we passed out of the House. I also commend your efforts on criminal justice reform under the leadership of Speaker Frierson and Attorney General Ford. Home care workers who are disproportionately women of color have been on the front lines of this pandemic. We must ensure adequate pay and protections for these essential workers. Like the American Families Plan, Senator Neal's bill will give them that important seat at the table. And let's come together to help get our hospitality workers back on the job now that tourism and business travel are on the rise. We still need to raise the minimum wage across the country and take other federal action to address systemic inequalities that exist in our society. I'm proud to co-sponsor legislation to increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, which would give over 32 million workers a well-deserved pay increase. And let me thank our friends in organized labor for all the efforts to support working families. You are key to expanding the middle class. I'm hopeful you'll also pass Assembly Bill 213, which would remove citizenship requirements for higher education scholarship programs and secure access to in-state tuition for any graduate of a Nevada high school. That complements the bill we've already passed out of the House to provide a pathway to citizenship for DREAMers and TPS recipients. Finally, I want to discuss one major area where I'm especially proud that Nevada is an outlier. Across the country, we've seen state legislatures advance voter suppression bills based on a big lie about the 2020 election. Let me be clear, individuals who continue to promote these baseless conspiracy theories are a threat to U.S. democracy. Words have consequences, and I saw them firsthand when I was barricaded in my Washington, D.C. office for hours on January the 6th as domestic terrorists attempted to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. I compliment Secretary of State Zagaski's oversight of our election here in Nevada. And now, instead of making it harder for your constituents to vote, you all are considering comprehensive legislation to enhance access and opportunities for eligible voters to make their voices heard in our democracy. That's just wonderful. Let me conclude by saying I also believe that when it comes to presidential primary elections, Nevada should go vote first. Over the last decade, Nevada has experienced immense population growth. Our state represents the diversity of this country urban and rural, ethnically and racially diverse, with a strong union and military presence. We are truly a microcosm of the nation. So I hope you'll pass Assembly Bill 126, 
which would change our presidential caucus to a primary and make the Nevada primary the first in the nation. Ultimately, I'm convinced we'll bounce back from this past year stronger than ever. Nevada was battle-born and it is battle-weathered. We are a resilient state and we have proven it before. I know in my heart that our best days are ahead. So thank you all for working so hard and so smart to put us on the path to a strong recovery. I hope to see you soon. Assemblywoman Carlton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would move that the Senate and Assembly in joint session extend a vote of thanks to Congresswoman Titus for her timely, able, and constructive message. You heard the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Assemblyman Levitt. I move that the joint session of the Senate and Assembly be dissolved. You heard that motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. I declare the joint session dissolved. The assembly will come back to order and we will go to order of business. 15 remarks. Assembly woman win. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order of business 15. Order of business 15. Um, I love seeing all the masks today for um, what is the first day in the legislature of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. The United States Cong Congress permanently established May as this month in 1992 in recognition of the significant contributions Asian and Pacific Americans had made to the development of arts, science, government, military, commerce, and education in the United States. Whereas on May 18th, it was also designated Asian Culture Day in, the Nevada, in Nevada by Senate Bill 175, which was signed into law by former Governor Brian Sandoval on May 18th, 2017, bringing to the attention of Nevada residents the importance and impact of Asian Americans on cultural, religious, political, and business environment here within our own state. Today, um, the Asian American and Pacific Islander immigrant story in Nevada is replete with chapters of their historic efforts on the life in Nevada and America, ranging from Chinese immigrant laboring on dangerous but essential railroad, canal, and mining projects, to AAPI immigrants filling critical shortages of workers in occupations like healthcare and nursing today. The AAPI community, whose members came from across America and traced their heritage to a wide variety of countries, is estimated to represent a 10% and growing of Nevada's population. Today, it is proclaimed that the invitation of the Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus of the Nevada Legislature that we consider May 3rd, 2021, 2021, sorry, um, as AAPI Celebration Day at the Nevada Legislature. Um, I think all of you have your masks that were designed by um, Sarah, but um, there are treats and there is lunch for the legislative um, body um, that will be provided, and I think you were all provided coupons. But I would like to thank all of those who assisted in the AAPI Day at the legislature, including Sarah, Shane, Naomi, Natalia, Jenny, Hugh, Kayla, and um, just a special point of privilege, my own attache DL has been just incredible in organizing with outside community groups, as well as all of your attaches to make sure that um, we are recognizing and celebrating um, Asian American Pacific Islander culture here in the Nevada legislature. So thank you so much. Assemblyman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recently learned of the passing of Garth Dull uh, last week. He was a dedicated employee for the Nevada Department of Transportation. Garth started working with DOT in 1960, and except for a three-year hiatus with the U.S. Army in Germany, he continued with them until he retired in 1995 as director of NDOT. Garth was married to Cheryl Lau, who served as the first Asian American Republican Secretary of State for Nevada from 1992 until 1995. I had the pleasure of working with Cheryl 
for the last four years as she was chairperson of the State Commission on Ethics and got to meet Garth in a much more personal way. He was an avid hunter, which led to some uh, tremendous conversations. He actually had a couple uh, trophies on, uh, for Nevada on a um, mountain horn or mountain sheep. He was also a father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. I would say that he definitely came from humble beginnings and soared farther than anyone could have ever imagined. He became an excellent leader who balanced hard work with having fun. His quick wit and sense of humor was always welcome. Garth was truly a great example of what can be accomplished in life with a little bit of effort. He will be missed by all who had the pleasure of knowing him. I ask that this body extend their thoughts and condolences to the Dull family. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Assemblyman Levitt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Also on this uh, first legislative day of uh, Asian American Pacific, Pacific Islander Heritage Month, um, I also wanted to take a moment to recognize the members of my family who immigrated to the United States from Asia in the, in the Pacific Islands. Um, my great-great-grandfather, Ching Kia Pao, who was born in 1853 in Guadong, China, immigrated at the young age to the Kingdom of Hawaii, where he met and married Mary Iwapuni Paakana. My, my family's probably gonna give me, give me grief for, the, for this pronunciation. Their son, their son William Ah Song Apau, and his wife, Elizabeth Parmenter, had my grandmother, Edith Leilani Apau, in Kauai, in, in Kauai Hawaii, in, 18, in 1918, he met my grandfather, Michael Talu Bermudez, who had immigrated to Hawaii from the Philippines, and they were married in 1937. Their daughter, Clarita, my mother, came to Las Vegas to dance in a Polynesian review, and she loved Nevada, and lived here until her passing. Without these people, I would not be standing here today. They and my Asian Pacific heritage are both very important to me and help inform my outlook on life as a member of this community and as a legislator. Thank you. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Thank you, Speaker. Today we celebrate our colleague from District 20's birthday. And since you are the apple of our eye, we wanted to send you to Fiji, and then we thought of hosting a gala for you. However, Granny Smith didn't have enough money, so we hope you have a red delicious of a day instead. Happy birthday. <laughs> Some even weren't looking. Thank you very much and for giving me a second day of birthday celebration because this is one of the advantages of a Sunday birthday. So thank you. Assemblywoman Venus Thompson. Hi, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an order of business at 15 before I go into some logistics. Uh, Senator Raddy and myself are happy to sponsor a proclamation um, recognizing May 3rd through May 7th, 2021 as Nevada Cancer Action Week in the mem memory of Jet Mitchell, a longtime Nevada advocate. We do so because Nevada, in the state of Nevada, cancer is the second leading cause of death according to the American Cancer Society Incorporated, and they estimate that more than 16,000 new cancer cases will be diagnosed and 5,400 people will die from the disease in 2021. Due to an increase in early detection practices, more people will survive their cancer diagnosis than ever before. More than a quarter of cancer patients and survivors report delays with their cancer care because of coronavirus and continue to experience potentially serious coronavirus-related healthcare delays and high levels of anxiety associated with the ongoing pandemic. 
as well. We want to remind everyone that no one should be disadvantaged in their fight against cancer because of the disability status, gender identity, income level, location of the person, their sexual orientation, or skin color. And the American Cancer Society Action Network is a nonpartisan, nonprofit advocate for affiliate of the American Cancer Society fighting for health equity for everyone. So we are happy to, um, I was happy to co-sponsor this proclamation on their behalf. Some logistics for tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. Um, we will convene as a body at noon. However, we want to remind everyone to please be here and seated at 11.30 a.m. because we're going to have a panoramic photo taken. So if we could be prompt at 11.30, that will allow us to, no, is that, that is tomorrow, correct? Wednesday. When, oh, that's Wednesday, so take all that, and I meant for Wednesday. So for Wednesday, please do all that. <laughs> be here and seated at 11.30 a.m. And then we'll start with our regular session at noon. Tomorrow's just gonna be a regular run of the mill day. So with all of that being said, Mr. Speaker, and no other business before us, I'd move that the assembly adjourn until Tuesday, May 4th, 2021 at the hour of 11.30 a.m. You've heard the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries, we are adjourned. <laughs>